So when I wake up, the only thing I have to do is turn on the Bluetooth speaker, then tap the playlist that I want to listen to. So I have this problem where I wake up on time in the mornings, but spend a decent amount of time scrolling through my phone. The phone is the first thing I pick up in the morning to check my notifications, specifically missed phone calls and text messages. Some way, somehow, I find myself opening social media apps like Instagram to check notifications there as well. And before you know it, the 5 minutes I intended to use to check notifications turns into 30 to 40 minutes of mindless scrolling. This isn't necessarily the best way to start the day, especially since the time spent scrolling could be used for something more productive like stretching, journaling, or meditation. I've tried to break this habit in several ways, and the most effective way I've found is leaving my phone outside the room when I sleep. Out of sight, out of mind. It has worked for the most part, but the only other reason I find myself picking up the phone for in the morning is to play music when I shower. I pick it up to play music, but I end up seeing one notification and responding to it. Then I see a second, then a third, and before you know it, I'm right back where I started spending more time on my phone in the mornings. So I thought to myself, how can I play the songs or playlist I want to listen to without using my phone or using any screen for that matter? Now I know what some of you are thinking, just tell Alexa to play it. Yes, that would work, but that would be too easy. I am an engineer and I never give up the chance to make an overcomplicated solution to a very simple problem. Plus, let's be honest, you wouldn't have clicked on this video if it was titled telling Alexa to play my music. You came here to see some cool complicated stuff and that's what we're gonna do. I came across this video on TikTok by Tala EXE where she demoed what she called the modern day record player. She used RFID cards to play specific songs without needing to touch a device at all and I thought to myself, that would be the perfect solution. Have cards linked to playlists or songs. When I wake up, I can simply pick up the card corresponding to the playlist I want to listen to, tap it, and boom, my music is playing without me needing to pick up my phone or any device for that matter. Problem solved. Okay, that's the plan. In her video, she mentioned how it worked and based on her explanation, the first thing I needed was a Raspberry Pi. I've had this Raspberry Pi for about two years. It was given to me from a good friend, Ahmed Ismail, shout out to you for a graduation gift. I am going to go ahead and take a look at what's inside to see what we have and what we currently need for the project. I know for sure we need the RFID cards and the RFID scanner. We don't have those, but I wanna see if we have the micro SD card and all the other things that we need for a Raspberry Pi. So let's take a look. Luckily, the Raspberry Pi I was given came with everything I needed except the RFID cards and the RFID reader. I spent a few minutes online looking for tutorials on how to connect the RFID reader to a Pi and found this awesome article that had everything in detail. It also had links to buy the RFID card reader, so I went ahead and placed an order. While waiting for the card reader to arrive, I set up the Raspberry Pi. This isn't my first time working with a Raspberry Pi. I created this magic mirror my junior year of college, all powered by a Raspberry Pi. To set it up, I downloaded the operating system of the Pi from their website to my computer, then flashed it on the memory card that came with the Pi. I then removed the memory card, inserted it into the Pi, connected it to a monitor, and followed the prompt. So I ordered the RFID cards and the RFID scanner. Let's go pick them up from the package room downstairs. At this point, I have everything I need to start the project. The next step is to connect the RFID card reader to the Raspberry Pi. As someone who strictly writes code, this is my first time handling any form of hardware that involves wiring. I specifically chose to study software engineering in college because I did not want to deal with any wires or hardware at all. The whole process was new and somewhat uncomfortable because I did not know if I was doing it the right way or the wrong way. I was simply looking at the diagram and trying to match the wires from the card reader to the breadboard and the breadboard to the Pi. Oh, I look nice. Instead of working on the connection from the RFID cards to the breadboard to the Raspberry Pi, then to the system. But I am out of these jumper wires, the ones that go from the RFID card reader into the breadboard. I don't have enough to go from here to here, so I'm gonna place an order. In the meantime, I'll start working on the code while the wires come. As I said, I thought I ran out of wires, but I found another way to connect the whole system that required fewer wires. It involved plugging the card reader directly into the breadboard. At this point, I was strictly working based on faith and vibes in hopes that it would work because I had no idea how to even test if what I was doing was correct. So imagine my surprise when this happened. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but there is light coming from the RFID card reader. So meaning the wiring that I did here is correct. 
there's power going from here to the breadboard and then from the breadboard to the card reader. So yes, at least I know my wiring is correct. I'll go ahead and continue writing the code. After the wiring was done, I started writing the code that connects to the hardware. I thought it would be in C or some other new language that I would have to learn, but to my surprise, it was in Python. The tutorial I followed had a code snippet that I tried, but it didn't work probably because it was written in 2014 and hasn't been updated since then. I looked up the official documentation and adjusted the code accordingly. Yes, yes. <laughs> Reading, it says hold the card near the reader. And if I hold the card near the reader, it reads it and it does something. I don't know what it's doing. It's probably crashing. I don't know what's happening. I'll look at that code tomorrow, but. <laughs> Yeah. The next part is writing the code that connects to the Spotify API. I stepped out of my apartment to write this part because I needed a change in scenery. Plus, it was a sunny day which is very rare in the Pacific Northwest around this time of the year. Writing the code that communicated with the Spotify API took some time with the hardest part being authorization. Most Spotify API calls require authentication which is easy to do. Since I wanted to control the playback and play specific albums on behalf of the user, I needed authentication and authorization, which is a little hard to do because of the way the hardware code is structured. Once I figured that part out, I read the documentation for accessing and using the playback controls, and I can honestly say that the Spotify developer API has some of the best documentation that's out there. They give live examples and show you how to get the token, call their APIs and everything. Once I got the token, controlling the playback was as easy as making an API call. I pushed the code to GitHub, returned home and merged the hardware code to the Spotify code. After coding for hours, it was time for the moment of truth. I've been working on this for the past six hours now. If I tap this, it should play. I don't remember the playlist I put, but it's something high. Let's check that. <laughs> RFID tag that came with it, but it should play something different. Haha! <laughs> okay! I paused the music so my video doesn't get flagged for copyright, but you get the point, it works. I'm gonna buy as many of these cards and map them to different playlists or different albums that I like, and the next step after this should be to build a box that houses everything here. Right now, it's just a bunch of wires, but I'm gonna build a box and just put everything in there and then. Yeah, that should be pretty much it. I started modeling the box and realized that it would have taken me way too long to build, mainly because I was learning the modeling software at the same time I was trying to model the box, and I currently do not have the facilities to do any woodworking projects right now. I saved a lot of time by going online and browsing a catalog of pre-made boxes from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Amazon, and a few other sites. I ordered a box that was pretty close to what I was looking for, spent some time putting everything together, and after about two weeks, the project was finally over. So on the right hand side of the box underneath this area is the RFID card reader and on the left we have all the cards linked to playlists and what I like to call my no skip albums. I printed the album and the playlist covers and stuck them on the cards to easily differentiate them. I also color coded the labels, black for albums and red for playlists. When I tap the cards to the right hand side of the box, it plays the album or playlist to the device that I'm currently listening on. This can cause a problem if I'm not actively listening on any device. To solve this problem, I programmed it to play on my Amazon Echo, which is always active by design. I then have the Echo connected to a Bluetooth speaker, so when I wake up, the only thing I have to do is turn on the Bluetooth speaker, then tap the playlist that I want to listen to. I also programmed these little fobs to do things like pause playback, shuffle the songs, skip to the next song, and more. If you want to learn more about how it works, all the code is up in my GitHub, fully documented for anyone to take a look. The link is down in the description. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and catch you on the next one. Peace.